Hello there everybody and welcome, it's Morgana here with uh, this week's watercolour tutorial. Today I'm going to be demonstrating for you this lovely bright and wild autumn teasels uh, loose watercolour painting. Uh, just before we begin, a quick bit of info. Um, I know that some of you have been asking about the Davidson's Pigments, uh, our handmade tinted graphite uh, palette sets. Uh, I'm really excited to tell you all that we now have some available to purchase uh, in my Etsy shop, which I will link below. Uh, all the info you need to find them is going to be in the video description. Uh, and there's also going to be a few sets of the Wild Earth handmade paint collection available to purchase as well. Uh, which is what I'll be using to paint today's uh, painting. Um, so with uh, that out of the way, uh, let's paint! So I'm using Milford brand watercolour paper today, uh, size a quarter of an imperial sheet, 100% cotton, weight 140 pounds. I've got it taped onto my board and I've drawn out some teasel shapes and I've prepped them with a bit of Pebeo drawing gum or masking fluid just on these stalks and around the fluffy little edges, the outlines of the teasels themselves. Uh, the colours I'm using are up on the screen at the moment. As usual, I will put a full list of all my equipment, everything that I'm using in the video description below. But to begin with, I'm just wetting the paper all over with a large two inch wash brush and clean water. And I'm just gonna let that sit for a minute just to let the water really soak uh, into the paper. So now that the paper is really nice and wet, you can see it's just starting to buckle slightly, but still keeping its shape really nicely. I'm beginning with some indigo. Uh, this is Indigo Genuine, made from a um, uh, genuine indigo plant, which is a really lovely, sort of rich, uh, deep colour. You can see I'm just putting it on in quite bold sweeps, still using my large brush. Now I want this painting to have quite a sort of wild and windy feel, so I'm trying not to be too uh, overly careful with it. Um, but I am avoiding the, um, the teaser outlines with this darker colour, because I want them to be a little bit bright. Uh, and stand out still. And now I'm just introducing a little bit of red. Uh, this is Venice red that I'm using today, but you can use any sort of, uh, any rusty colour paint. Uh, a light red or Indian red would serve you really well here. I think it goes really nicely with the indigo. Uh, it's a rich dark colour and it gives us that autumnal feel uh, without relying too heavily on those sort of very, very bright sort of oranges and yellows. We're having a, a slightly more muted palette uh, for today's painting. And as you can see, I've just switched to a smaller brush now to uh, get the paint in between those teasel shapes and just introduce uh, some sort of semi-abstract wild sort of grassy background shapes into the paper whilst it's still really wet. So you can see all the paint that I'm putting on is sort of softening down uh, and diffusing really quite a lot uh, as, I'm, uh, as I'm putting it on. We're getting this sort of soft, wild and windy sort of background. And I'm still trying to avoid uh, those teasels, the main parts of them at least, getting a little bit of colour bleed going in uh, to the edges on a couple of them, but that's okay. Uh, it doesn't need to be perfect, I just want to keep the majority of the uh, insides uh, nice and bright.
and as you can see I'm now switching between the indigo and the light red uh, just trying to get a little bit of definition, some light and shadow and some different shades uh, into the background wash just coming in now with a little bit more Venice Red really really bright strong uh, pigment this one you can see how richly it's going on there uh, a little goes a long way <laughs> with this paint uh, so I'm just making sure it goes on um, only in a few areas and it's already sort of softening out and diffusing really nicely into that nice wet uh, background wash And now I'm just spattering on our next colour, uh, some lovely bright uh, yellow ochre, which I'm beginning to just spatter on with the fan brush really quite liberally. Um, and as I'm doing it, you can see that these spatters, unlike when you do them on dry paper, um, they're going onto the wet paper and uh, starting to sort of mix and mingle with the rest of the paint there. Uh, not too much, still retaining that sort of lovely natural sort of wild looking shape. Um, but they are softening down and just sort of blending into the background, just giving us that lovely extra little bit of texture. And I just added another colour as well. You can see I've just spattered on a little bit of a soft brown colour to just to give a little bit of extra richness. Uh, that's the Cypress Burnt Brown um, I'm using today, but you could use any other brown such as uh, perhaps a Van Dyke Brown or Burnt Umber. Um, I think a lovely warm brown is best. Uh, for this sort of painting and now again whilst the uh, paper is still wet and quickly uh, with my mop brush just picking up um, a little bit of the yellow ochre and starting to introduce it into those teasel shapes getting that lovely bright colour there and I'm not being too precious or too neat about this as this is going to be a nice sort of loose, uh, loose painting uh, so you can see I'm just dabbing the colour in Still using plenty of water and letting it run and letting it move around and mingle with the colours that are already bled in slightly through the outline. And now I'm just dabbing in a little bit of extra of the uh, Cypress Burnt Brown to give a little bit of shape, shadow and uh, definition into those teasels and again plenty of water so that's going to diffuse down really nicely and give us some really pretty patterns I hope. So now just to add a little bit of extra um, interest and a little bit of wildness to the background, I'm going to use some salt. Uh, just using regular uh, table salt for this, 
you can use any old sort <laughs> the finer the grain the smaller the bloom that you will get so I've just poured a little bit of salt into my palm and I'm just sprinkling it now onto the painting while the paper is still still wet and that's going to sit and suck up the paint and sort of absorb it and create these lovely little white bloom patterns you can see I'm sprinkling quite a lot on because <laughs> I want this to be a sort of a, a wild and windy painting uh, and this is the result uh, it's now dried and you can see uh, where I've sprinkled the salt around we've got this lovely sort of white fluffy um, almost like a seed head uh, sort of explosion of seeds coming up from this um, from this lovely wild autumnal painting so I'm really pleased with uh, how that turned out uh, just one thing with the salt um, I know some people struggle with the timing um, I know I certainly did when I first began painting so if you put it on when your paint is too wet then it won't work um, again if you put it on when the uh, paint is too dry again it, it won't work you will only get very minimal effects you need to wait until the shine has come off your painting so it's not very very wet anymore um, but just between that stage of just beginning to dry um, and not fully dry I hope that makes sense <laughs> I'll try and do a, a demonstration showing a bit more clearly um, the best way to use it at some point in the future uh, but for now, uh, now that everything is dry, I'm just going to add a few more background grasses into this painting. Uh, I'm using my Pro Art Sword Liner brush to do this, a lovely fine brush, but you could use uh, anything you like provided it has um, a nice fine point. So now I'm just painting in, um, I'm going to paint in some delicate little seed heads. And this one is really nice and simple, um, but very effective, I think, in the background of any sort of autumnal uh, floral painting. You can see all I'm doing is um, a lovely uh, clean line for the stem, and then um, spinning off some uh, a couple of little lines for the leaves and then the actual seat head itself is just a collection of fine lines radiating outwards from the central point um, similar to how you would draw perhaps a dandelion seed head uh, this one is uh, lovely and delicate then all you need to do is just paint in a tiny little seed on the end of each of those radiating lines uh, and I think they look really really pretty uh, and really really effective So I'm just going to go ahead and add a couple more of these to my painting uh, off camera just so that you don't have to watch me through 20 more minutes of me doing exactly the same thing um, but I will just show you me popping in uh, the very last one down on this uh, left hand corner just in case you wanted to, uh, to watch again.
And there we are, simple yet effective. So now uh, the sort of main background seed heads are done, the sort of little decorative background parts of this painting. I'm just going to add in, uh, sort of settle them in with a few more lines, uh, a few more sort of wild grasses popping up from the bottom of the painting there. Uh, again, just using some lovely fine lines uh, and just varying the colours as well. You can see I've picked up a little bit of yellow ochre for this and I'm just introducing that lovely yellow all around uh, the painting now just to really... Uh, get a really nice colour harmony going on here. And of course, uh, with your own painting, you can choose to do as many or as few of these sort of background seed heads and uh, grasses as you choose. Um, this did turn out to be quite a busy painting for me. I think particularly the background is uh, sort of quite um, quite stand out if that makes sense so I didn't want to put in too much extra detail to distract any more from the uh, the star of the show which is our lovely teasels however if you do end up with a, a softer sort of plainer background and maybe if you <laughs> didn't go as wild as me with the salt effect then uh, perhaps you could afford to have even more lovely sort of wild grasses and wild seeds coming up in the background there So now I've let the rest of that work dry, the second layer, uh, all those little delicate seeds and grasses, uh, and now I'm going to just gently rub away the masking fluid using my fingertip, just remove all the masking fluid on this paper. There we are, you can see we've got these lovely bright sort of uh, glints of white uh, showing through with the stalks of the teasels and the sort of little delicate fluffy edges, which I'm now going to uh, fill in. Uh, not entirely, I'm not uh, going to cover up the white completely because I still want that to peep through like these little glints of light uh, glinting around the sort of edges of the teasels uh, the impression of the low autumn sun perhaps um, but obviously they look a little bit stark and a little bit unpainted so I'm just going to settle them in uh, by painting in some um, soft lines of yellow ochre and cypress burnt brown watered down quite a lot and I'm going to bring those lines into towards the uh, centre of the teasel but using really quite sort of soft watered down paint so it fades as it dries and just gives that impression of that sort of lovely spiny goodness uh, <laughs> that you get in a teasel. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how else to, uh, to describe it but I hope you can all uh, understand what I mean.
and as you can see here I'm just starting to do around the edges of the lines that I drew with the masking fluid uh, the stalks and the sort of the ratty edges of the teasel again I want to keep that lovely glint of white um, that little light bouncing off of those stems and around those edges um, but I want a little bit of definition there as well uh, so I'm just painting alongside and around the line using um, a small brush and uh, some of my lovely cypress burnt brown lovely warm brown colour to echo the, uh, the lovely warmth of the yellow ochre So as you can see I've just hopped ahead a little bit, uh, I didn't want to show you every single step of this process just because it took me quite a little while to get all these teasels filled in. As you can see I've done all the ones on the left, uh, just filling in the outline uh, nice and raggedly with some brown and some yellow, exactly the same way as I've just showed you. Uh, and now I'm just filling in the last one just so that you can, uh, that you can watch again. Uh, and as you can see, um, I've switched to a smaller brush as well. My other one is a, um, a size 4 round that I was using, uh, and it's a really lovely brush, but it just wasn't quite fine enough for what I was hoping for, uh, just especially when doing those lovely sort of soft raggedy tees or edges. I thought the fine line worked better. Uh, so this one is from Pro Art. It's a Master Stroke Series 60 uh, small brush, uh, and I believe it is the size 2 slash 0, so it's... Uh, Lovely and delicate without uh, being too small to actually uh, see the lines properly. <laughs> And as you can see, just going around, drawing those lines into towards the centre of the teasel. Not quite covering up that centre there because I want that to remain nice and bright. Sort of like a glint of light, you know, that sort of glow you get in the sun when it hits it. And you get that lovely sort of brighter patch in the middle. Because of course teasels are quite a rounded uh, objects. So you get that sort of glow of light on one side and the rest starting to slightly be in shadow. Is the impression that we're trying to give here by leaving this little patch in the middle. Um, with that paler colour and then just ruffling the outside with some more uh, darker brown and again just following that stalk downwards, following that line uh, and just giving it a little bit of extra shape uh, and shadow So now we're very nearly done. Uh, the last little trick I decided to do was add some more paint spatters uh, just very carefully 
Um, and again, this is going onto dry paper this time, so the spatters, they won't spread, they will stay where they land, if that makes sense. Uh, starting with a little bit of the Venice Red, and just going through the uh, other three colours that I've used, uh, and just, just to give a little bit delicate extra uh, detail, a little bit of extra life to this painting. Of course, as I always say, this stage is entirely optional if you would like a less busy painting. But I just love the idea of this being sort of a wild and windswept sort of scene, uh, with the spatters being little motes of seeds or dust or, or tiny little mayflies that are coming up off of this uh, lovely autumnal patch that we've got here. A little piece of wilderness. <laughs> And now here we are with the finished painting. Uh, I hope you folks enjoyed it, enjoyed watching the process, uh, maybe picked up some tips and tricks, uh, or at least enjoyed watching the video. Uh, so thank you very much everybody for watching, thank you for being here. Um, don't forget to uh, check out our paint sale uh, if you're interested, or if you'd just like to uh, find out what it's all about, follow the links below in the video description, uh, and they'll take you right there. Uh, don't forget also to check out my page on Patreon as well if you fancy joining up and getting me even more videos like this one. Uh, a huge shout out and a big thank you as always to those of you who are already members of my Patreon. Uh, wonderful people help keep this channel going uh, and I'm really grateful for you all for being there. Uh, but that's all from me this week. Whatever you're up to, have a lovely rest of the day and I'll see you all again soon in the next video.